So Jagex just made the best weapon in old school RuneScape even better. Or did they? Let's find out. Hi, Zeppa here. Today we got this Project Rebalance item and combat ad adjustments uh, blog. And there's a lot going on. I think I'm going to be mainly focusing on the mage portion of this whole rebalance thing. And I'll make a separate video about the melee weapons and boss adjustments if necessary. But I want to talk about the mage portion mostly. Oh yeah, and before we dive into this topic more, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you like the video. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Okay, let's keep going. Obviously, when we're talking about mage gear and mage uh, attack style in general, the biggest changes will be with the Tumek and Shadow. So Jagex is buffing everything else in the mage endgame gear department except Arims, which is a nice change as Arims has been the budget setup for ages now. And there's so many cool mage gear setups that people are just not using. Like we can see in this picture, they're buffing Augury, they're buffing Ancestral, Virtus, Third Age Mage Gear, Infinity Rope Set, and the Dagon High outfit. They're also buffing the Soul Reaper Axe, Inquisitor, Armor and Mace, and the Elder Maul. But we're not going to be talking about the melee gear here. Also, they're nerfing the Occult Necklace and Void Waker and the Zara's God Sword. Okay, this is a bit weird, but I'm going to be only focusing on the Occult Necklace because this video is all about the mage gear. So let's see what Jagex says. In the vlog, they say that the Occult Necklace does an astronomical amount of lifting for magic's damage output. And to make a long story short, we think an item this powerful should set you back more than mere 800k GP. Yeah, I, I totally agree with this statement. And as an Iron Man, I feel like the 93 Slayer requirement to get the Occult is more in line with like how powerful the item is. But it's very easy to get once you hit the level. And, you know, the GE price is non-existent. I totally agree with not having 10% damage bonus on Occult is like the right call to make. And to just bleed out the damage bonus from the necklace to other gear pieces to make it more in line with like every gear piece giving you an upgrade rather than just having one cheap item that's relatively easy to get just do the most of the lifting let's let's see the jagex's example here for example let's assume two players both have 99 magic and fancy a bit of barrows player a equips an occult necklace for 800 kgp and calls it a day player b equips a ancestral set magus ring Eternal Boots, and turns on Augury, which sets them back a whopping 454 million GP. Now, who do you think kills the Melee Barrows brothers faster? They are not talking anything about the weapon, but let's say you have a Tumekan Shadow. I think it's gonna be just the Occult, rather than all the other gear. If you answered player A, you're correct. And we hope you understand why the situation seems more than a little unfair. It's time to break the Occult Necklace's stranglehold on Magic Gear's progression. I agree, 100%. This is good news. I haven't looked at the percentages yet, but I'm kind of afraid that there will be huge unbalance unless they do it properly. So let's see, let's see what Jagex has in mind. There are already too many Occult Necklaces out there for us to reasonably make them less common. I agree. Making them harder to get will just punish iron players who have to climb all the way to 93 Slayer for this all-important unlock. Yeah, yeah, kinda, but if you ask me, they should make the thermonuclear boss instance so only one player could go in at the time and you don't get crashed. And then they should make the occult necklace very rare from just the boss, not the small ones. Like the blog post says, it's too late. There's too many in the market. 
every iron who has it, like me, would just have an advantage over every new iron who has to grind tons and tons and tons of uh, bossing to get the occult. So, Jagex, I'm, I'm fine with you nerfing the occult necklace. Let's see what the magic damage percentages are gonna be. So, occult necklace. Magic damage reduced from 10% to 4%. Okay, so 6% decrease. I'm not gonna do the calculations with like the 3 times multiplier or 4 times multiplier with the shadow just yet. Let's just see the flat percentages. And they're making ancestral robes set pieces. Magic damage per piece increased from 2% to 4%. Just by having full ancestral will give you a total of 6% more magic damage than before. So if you have the occult necklace and full ancestral, nothing will change. You, you'll still have the 10% damage. So ancestral gives you 12% in total uh, with the, after the update. And before the update, it was 6%. So the old was 10% from occult and 6% from ancestral, which was 16 in total. And now it's going to be 4 from the occult and 12 from the ancestral. So having occult and ancestral are exactly the same. Virtus set pieces will give you 2% instead of the old 1% per piece. That's nice. Infinity robe set pieces. Magic damage per piece increased from 0 to 1%. But hold on. Does, does this mean that the infinity robe set pieces include the boots and the gloves and everything so infinite boots and eternal boots give you one percent now i'm not sure i kind of hope they do but I, d I don't know we'll see dagon high robe set pieces magic damage per piece increased from zero to one percent this also applies to ornamented versions jagex might just f it up and not apply it to the ornamented versions until like six months later this has happened multiple times but okay i i take a word jagex please don't mess this up third age mage armor pieces magic damage per piece increased from zero to one percent so infinity robes dagon high robes and the third age mage armor all give you one percent per piece maybe just for the bottoms top and head or maybe for all items i'm, I'm not sure but okay one percent per piece that's that's super nice i hate the look of arms unless i'm doing wildy content because pkers in arms look scary infinity robes love those and they are so underutilized no one wears them this will be a great update dagon high the same looks amazing thanks jagex for making them viable and well third age is out of reach for iron man but that's a nice one too and finally we have augury magic damage while active increased from zero to four percent wow okay so augury is great i think that the arcane prayer scroll will actually rise in price pretty much and we have a note Tumakan Shadow doesn't multiply accuracy or damage bonuses gained from prayers. So this would remain 4% increase rather than 12%. Oh yeah, they're talking about the augury. That's that's great news. Okay, and now Jagex has given us some examples. So how does that shake out damage-wise? The buffed occult plus full ancestral plus augury is 20% magic damage up from 16%. This is pretty huge. Like considering how shadow is already such a great weapon like maybe you you could argue that the tebow is better but in my eyes the shadow with max gear is like the best weapon in the game and they just made it even better that's that's crazy stuff from jagex i kind of love it because i have the shadow i kind of hate it because i don't have any ancestral or augur yet so yeah not bad but could be better let's see unchanged Occult full ancestral 16%. Okay, yeah, so if you don't have augury and you have occult and full ancestral, the damage will be as it was before. Buffed occult plus full vertis plus augury 14% damage up for up from 13. Yeah, so 
but that's mostly because of the augury and not so much from the vertis buff let's see nerfed occult plus full vertis 10 percent magic damage down from 13 that's that's kind of scam if you ask me i think they should have buffed vertis a bit more surely it's it's great for bursting or barraging the vertis so it's not meant to be used as much with the shadow but i kind of hoped they would have put like two and a half percent or maybe three percent uh, per piece in the vertis rather than just two but maybe i'm biased because i have vertis okay so buffed occult plus dagon high infinity third age plus augury 11 percent magic damage up from 10 occult and infinity gear without an augury so it's like three percent less which adds up when you have the shadow and arms with anything is just heavily nerfed so arms price is gonna go down every other mage gear price is gonna go up sell your arms immediately this is not financial advice by the way these changes bring the necklace's power a little more in line with its obtainability so that players can feel themselves getting stronger as they unlock other gear. Additionally, Augury has now greater offensive power, increasing the value of arcane player prayer scroll. Yeah, buy arcanes, you know, they're gonna go up. Or maybe they're up already, it's too late. Sell arcanes. Okay, don't don't listen to me, I have no idea what to do on, on the GE stuff. We also see new utility for robe sets which are currently best suited for accounts with def defense limitations. We want to see arms robes sit in a unique tankier battle ma- Wait, what? Tankier battle mage niche with defense that outshines other options in exchange for a slightly less offensive potential. In some scenarios, you don't even gain max hit from equipping more offensive sets, so these higher defenses are effectively free. Okay, yeah, that's, that's reasonable, unless you have the shadow. For players with near best in slot setups, these changes buff magic and bring other weapons closer to Tumekan's shadow. Oh yeah, because the augury doesn't scale with Tumekan's, but you know, the 4% will give 4% to, you know, like the Trident or the Sanguinestin. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. Now, this approach still has its issues. Magic has traditionally struggled to keep up with the other corners of the combat triangle in PvP, and these changes make it even weaker, especially for one defense accounts. We think we could resolve these issues with a blighted necklace slot and a little more damage on the Elder Chaos Druid robes, but we'd like to hear your feedback first. Okay, speaking of, we'd also like to hear other bits of gear that deserve a little bit boost. We can even work in increments of half a percent if it helps. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if Infinity Robes include the boots, but I think Eternal Boots, Infinity Boots, they definitely need the 1% damage buff or 1% um, magic damage multiplier. 100%, just give them 1%. Give them, I don't even mind, give them 2%. I have the boots, you can give it 5%. It's all like, make Infinity Boots great again. So this is my current mage setup and if you look at the equipment stats here I'm getting 63% magic damage bonus and it's mostly coming out of let's see if we take the shadow off it's 21% okay and let's see let's put on the trident of the swamp with a litmus ward and I'm getting 24% so what's gonna happen is that the occult will lose 6%, so that's gonna be 18%, and my vertus rope bottoms will give me 1% extra, and the helm will give me 1% extra. So I'll lose 6, and I'll gain 2 from the vertus. So I'll be down 4% magic damage when this change comes live, but there's a chance for me to get an easy plus one percent from the infinity rope top 
rather than using the arms, which I will have to grind unless I get Ancestral or Virtus first. To be honest, it's gonna be a, a huge difference with the Shadow for my setup, and it's gonna be a nerf. Even though it, it will buff the Shadow eventually when I reach Best Insult Mage Gear, but for now, it's gonna make my Shadow much less damage than what it used to be before this rebalance. And I'm, I'm still on the verge of like, is this worth it? Is it worth it to put the Shadow to be a good weapon only with full Ancestral? Whereas the T-Bow is pretty good with just like Black Dehyde or Blessed Dehyde. Obviously it's great with full Missouri, but I think the T-Bow with budget gear is way better than Shadow with budget gear. And yeah, Jagex has been trying to pump up the price of mage gear with making shadow scale with the better the gear but in my opinion the ancestral is getting way too much buff it's too exponential growth compared to the other items i think it's good that the infinity robes dagon high and third age get the one percent i'm 100 percent in line with that i think the eternal boots deserve one percent as well and i think ancestral being at 4% with the new update is a bit too much or if even if it's not too much I think Virtus should be 3% rather than 2 and it should be like more linear progression than a huge jump from the second best to the best being like a huge one where let's say you have dragon boots plus 4 strength and primordial boots plus 5 strength and the price difference is like 30 mil, even though it's just one strength bonus. And here you're getting from the second best being Virtus plus 2% damage per piece. You're g bumping it up to 4%, so it's double the bonus. So Ancestral will be way, way, way high in the price compared to any other mage gear. Arms will definitely go down, but... I still feel like it's a bit too much of a bump from 2% to 4% from Virtus to Ancestral. And yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this update. Comment down below. Let's keep the discussion going. I'll answer all comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Zeppa out. Peace. <laughs>